welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So today I have a weekly wrap up for you. I feel like these weeks are just going faster and faster, but that's just, you just gotta deal. So I have three books to share with you this week. I'm having like the worst reading month ever. Like, even though I'm reading a lot, like, technically I've read 13 books this week, and not this week, that would be insane, this month, but literally I think I've only, like, really, really enjoyed, like, three out of the 13, which to me is very, very disappointing. I don't know if it's me, I don't know if it's the books, it's just, it's been rough, like, there's just something that I want out of a book, and I'm just not getting it out of anything. So hopefully, this starting this weekend, I can start getting back on that bandwagon of really amazing books because I, I'm struggling, struggling really hard. So the first book that I read this week was Barefoot by Ellen Hildebrand. Now you would think that this would be one of my favorite books this month because I love Ellen Hildebrand, and. The sad note is I gave this like three stars. I could not get into this book to save my life. Like the very first day I read about 130 pages of it and that was like a struggle to even get there. And then I put it down, I went out that night, whatever. Then the next day I read 20 pages and that was it. Yeah, and then the last day I, like, suffered through the last 250 pages. I was like, you need to just sit there. You need to finish this because if you put it down and try to read something else, you're never going to come back to it. That's usually what happens. Like, I, I barely DNF books, but, like, if I do, I never come back. So I didn't want to do that to this book. And I feel like it wasn't even, like, the premise. Like, the premise sounded really good. Three women, they were going to Nantucket, like, all of her books usually are of, on Nantucket. One of them just lost her her professor job for um, having sexual relationships with a student. The second one is she just found out her husband's having an affair, and after having a really hard time getting pregnant, she actually is pregnant when she leaves to go to Nantucket. And then the third one is battling lung cancer. So these women have really intriguing, like, backgrounds. Yeah, I could not get into the book. Oh, and it also has another boy. What's his name? Josh. He's involved in this, too. But, like, there was just something about this book that I just could not get into. I caught myself skimming. I caught myself just seeing that there was all this, like, knowledge that was just repetitive and not necessary. And it was just like a knowledge dump and it was driving me insane and I just could not get into this book so it was kind of a bummer I still gave it three stars because I felt like the storyline was all right it was just really tough to get through so I'd have to say as of right now this is probably my least favorite Ellen Hildebrand book which is really really sad to go out of summer with that but what are you gonna do like I said it could just be me and not the book so don't take any of these like critiques very seriously well, you can. I'm just gonna. Okay, next book. I read Wanted by Sarah Shepard. I figured this would help me get out of, like, my, like, reading slumpishness. Like, it's not really, like, reading slump, but, like, my not being able to get into books. So I was like, oh, Pretty Little Liars. I could totally get into that. So I read this book. Literally took me a day. Not even. Sorry, my cat is, like, scratching up the door. Um, this is book eight in the Pretty Little Liars series. I gave this four stars. <laughs> this is not my favorite Pretty Little Liars book either. Like, I felt like the trick that Sarah Shep Shepard put in there, I wasn't falling for. And in the end, I, it actually was something that I didn't fall for. Um, no, that I did fall for. Like, it didn't, it was, it surprised me in a way that I wasn't expecting it to surprise me in. But it still, like, there was just something about this book that I just wasn't, like, okay with. Um... Which is kind of interesting because it looks like this was originally supposed to be the last book because in the acknowledgments in the back, she says have, with like a heavy heart, she's saying goodbye to this series and this is the last book and clearly there's still eight more. So we will continue on and see what happens, but it did not help me with my reading issues at all, unfortunately. 
So then I was like, you know what, I'm really not into anything that I really own right now. And I was really in the mood for like a thrilling book. So I was like, wait a minute, I just got that free ebook the other day. Maybe it's thrilling. And hold on, let me see. I know it's really tiny. For some reason, it won't let me see the cover, like, up close. But 28 and a Half Wishes, which is this one right here. That's by, like, really badly seen. And it's by Denise Grover Swank. I didn't also realize that this is also the first book in a six-book series that I will not be continuing. But um, I gave it four stars. It's about a woman... And she is 24 years old, and her mother has pretty much, like, controlled her entire life, like, said that she's, like, a demon, whatever. One day, she's working at the DMV, like she usually does, and she has this vision with this guy. And she's had visions her whole life, which is why her mother thinks she's a demon. And she has a vision, and it's of her dead. But she's never seen herself in a vision before, because she usually sees through the eyes of somebody else. So she's never seen herself. And this one, she's seen herself dead. And so things happen, and she goes home at, like, that night, and finally she stands up to her mother, like, the next day. Like, she's like, I've had it. Like, stop treating me like a child. I'm 24, blah, blah, blah. She leaves for the day and comes back, and her mother is dead. So, of course, they accuse her of killing her mother, and it goes from there. There's also a mysterious neighbor named Joe who gets involved. She's got an older sister named Violet, and it was all right. Like, I thought it was good, but the main character really bothered me. Like, she's 24, but she acts like a 12-year-old. Like, you literally think that you're reading from a 12-year-old's perspective, the way she's, like, like, lacy panties and, thong, like, and bras are apparently make you feel wicked, like you're sinning. Um, she's never had a drink before, which I'm not saying is wrong, but, like, she literally had, like, one beer and was, like, falling over tipsy and, like, was ridiculous. Um, she's never danced, she's never played in the rain, she's never done all these things, and just the thoughts that are going through her head as she's kind of experiencing things, because the 28 and a half wishes have to do with, like, after she stands up to her mom, she makes a list of 28 things that she would like to do before she dies because she thought that she was the one that was going to be dying. And so you kind of see her through this list and things. It wasn't thrilling at all. Like, it, they call it a thriller, and it's really not. And Rowdy, he's pulling out my carpet. Um, But it wasn't thrilling like I thought it was going to be, so it was kind of a disappointment. And like I said, with the main character being annoying, like, one thing that, okay, this drives me nuts, her favorite saying in the entire book, she kept saying, crappy doodles and I was like no this is no so it was all right I won't be continuing on with the series unless they find them for like free ebooks again but no so hopefully that was it for what I read this week so hopefully I will get on a new reading path where I'm going to be reading good books again because this week has just been a bummer unfortunately so I hope you guys have been reading better books than I have this month and I will see you guys really soon Everybody.